right at the start of the new year, the West finally decided to start pledging some fresh armored vehicles to Ukraine. Not counting various armored personnel carriers, three combat vehicles stood out. Out of those three, the French-made MX-10RC is quite interesting, as it can sort of be utilized as a light tank. It has a 105mm caliber gun, which is seemingly on par of what NATO tanks used to use in the 1960s through 1980s. But in fact, since the whole platform is a fairly light wheeled chassis, weighing some 17 tons with add-on armor, the gun is not a main battle tank one, but a specialized medium pressure gun. It thus uses specialized 105mm rounds, whose velocity falls slightly behind that of the main battle tank rounds. Furthermore, those rounds are shorter and lighter. And the fact is that while the vehicle's most potent rounds are enough to punch through a lot of armored vehicles used in Ukraine, they're not really enough to defeat main battle tanks with any regularity, save for perhaps T-62M and basic T-72 in some instances, from short range and or when hit in the hull. The MX also uses a specialized heat round with somewhat worse penetration values, but its even smaller muzzle velocity and quicker deceleration means it's not as precise. Time to target and projectile dispersion also suffer. Of course, the vehicle also has a high explosive round for various unarmored targets. Overall, the 10RC carries 38 main gun rounds of different kinds. The vehicle comes with two 7.62mm machine guns, one placed coaxially with the main gun and one mounted on top of the turret, to be manned by an exposed crew member. The vehicle usually has 4000 machine gun rounds stored for those two guns. But the firepower of the vehicle is really besides the main point. Its most potent quality is its sight. If Ukraine is getting the RCR variant, which has recently started to get retired by the French army, which could be the reason France is willing to part ways with the vehicles in the first place, then the vehicle would come equipped with a decent thermal sight. Those were installed in 1999 and allegedly allow various targets to be observed up to 4 kilometers away, day or night. That's a decent figure, bettering most Russian figures in Ukraine. But just like those Russian tanks, the AMX is lacking a second thermal sight for the commander. That's an option that most modern tanks have, making them truly efficient on the battlefield. The vehicle also comes equipped with a modern battlefield control system, which is especially important for a recon vehicle. On a digitized battlefield, being able to see and share precise and live data on enemy units can be quite important. That's something that a lot of both Russian and Ukrainian vehicles may still be lacking on today's battlefield. The MX also has a fairly sophisticated fire control computer with a laser rangefinder, offering quick and precise fire solutions for the gunner. However, the vehicle lacks gun stabilization of any kind. That stems from its role, as it's really not meant to engage in offensive action, and shooting while on the move is not how it should be used. In that regard, it falls behind main battle tanks used in Ukraine, as pretty much all have some sort of gun stabilization. That pretty much gives away the MX-10RC. It's there to be a recon vehicle, a scout, to spot contacts but not engage them, to relay information to other forces and to hunker down and keep safe. But that's because the MX is hardly armored and can be killed by most weapons on the battlefield. Its base hull is made out of aluminum alloy, unlike the steel-made tank hulls. However, since the late 1990s, vehicles have gotten additional steel armor covering parts of the hull and turret. While the basic variant is good against machine guns only, the up-armored one likely sent to Ukraine can withstand 23mm rounds, which may still not be enough to deal with Russian guns mounted on their infantry fighting vehicles, such as the BMP-2 and BTR-82A, which are quite numerous. Curiously, the powertrain of the vehicle doesn't use steerable wheels. Instead, turning is done by spinning wheels at different speeds and in different directions. That allows the vehicle to be more compact. It uses a diesel engine and it is fairly mobile. For example, both the Marder and Bradley infantry fighting vehicles have better power to weight ratios. At the same time, the MX can reach longer distances on a single fuel tank. Its max road speed is higher, but off-road it may be slower. In fact, its wheels may prove to be ill-suited to the battlefields in Ukraine. Due to the fairly mild winter, the ground in most of Ukraine is fairly muddy even now in the winter, and may remain so especially come spring. 
tracked vehicles might fare somewhat better in such conditions, which may mean the MX will have to be used more on road and on other hard surfaces, somewhat going against its main role as a battlefield scout. It's not known how many vehicles Ukraine is getting, and it's possible that even if the first batch is just a dozen or two, it may ultimately be many, providing they prove their worth. France recently had one unit switch from the AMX 10 RC to the newer Jaguar recon vehicle, meaning a dozen or so vehicles are free. And as we go into 2023, perhaps more and more vehicles will get retired from the French army and become freed up for Ukraine. School units would also be likely candidates to part ways with their vehicles. While France likely has additional old vehicles stored somewhere, those are not modernized those would not be as useful to Ukraine sent as they are. And that's it for this video. We'll make a few more videos in this series covering Bradley and Marder, and we hope to finish it all off with one last video talking about what impact all those vehicles might have on the war in Ukraine. Binkov will try to bring you these news briefs as quickly as he can. Remember, these videos are produced on top of our regularly scheduled videos. We may not be able to cover it all, but we try to cover things we do well. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.